Hi Year 5, I want to just use this video to have a chance to share with you um, some of the things that will help you to solve the problems in Step 4 and Step 5 of the Year 5 Home Learning, all about time this week for maths. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of websites. Um, first of all, this one here, this one is one that you can have a go at yourself. Um, and it talks all about finding differences between times. So there's lots of different levels that you can launch in and have a go at. I can start here, adding multiples of time. It's your choice if you want to have the timer on on the game. Off for now. Um, you can get it to show you the time on an analog clock or on a digital clock. Uh, I'm going to leave it as analog because I think that's probably one which maybe I could do a bit more practice with. Um, and then you can have your answers, um, the options that you have your answer shown on analog or a digital clock as well. Um, I might leave that one as a digital for now so that I'm practicing both skills. So, and it will give me a question to solve. So my question is, James and Abigail go for a walk for 25 minutes. They begin at the time shown. When do they finish? So I need to have a look at my clock. Um, and hopefully if you're doing this step, then you're already quite confident on telling the time on an analog clock. So I know this is 2.25 or 25 minutes past two o'clock. And I know now that they are going for 25 minutes. So if I'm trying to solve a problem where I am adding some time on, then I need to look at the clock time um, and you might want to use an analog clock to help you. So in this case then, I'm gonna then count on in my blocks of five, so I'm going to go five, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes. So I now need to visualize the minute hand has moved on 25 minutes. So now it's gonna be pointing here, which I know means it's gonna be 10 minutes until it gets to three o'clock. So 10 minutes to three o'clock, actually that answer's hiding behind my webcam here, and it's 2.50. So I'm gonna click on that one, and I got the question right. Now, this time then it says, Louis goes to the park at the time shown. He plays on the swings for half an hour. When does he go home? Now, I quite like this one because this one's half an hour. So I know that's gonna be half of the clock. So at the moment, I know the time is 25 minutes past six o'clock and I know it's going to be my minute hand that moves because it's half of an hour so I'm going to go halfway around the clock to here and if you wanted to double check it I know half an hour is 30 minutes so that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 and now I need to picture it and go right how what time is that then that's going to be five minutes to seven o'clock or 6.55 I'll do one more like this Okay, it takes 20 minutes to get from Loxley to Stratford by car. Elmer begins his journey at the time shown. When does he arrive? 20 minutes. Okay, actually I sort of know the clock could have three groups of 20 minutes in it, so that helps me a little bit. Uh, the clock currently says it is 11.20 or 20 minutes past 11 o'clock. And if it's another 20 minutes from there, 5, 10, 15, 20. My minute hand will end up over here. So it's going to be 20 minutes to 12 o'clock. So now I'm looking for 11.40. Okay, so you could use an analog clock to help you to answer those questions as well. Um, just having a look at a watch or a clock in the house and just picturing and counting round the clock as to where the time will end up. Um, and as I say, this is a game which is also available to you. Um, another thing that you can do is to draw yourself a timeline or a number line. Um, and time is quite easy to visualise on a number line. So you could draw something out for yourself a little bit like this. This question says, how much time does the bus take to get from Honington to Shipston? So I look at my bus timetable and I'm looking for the different times. So there's the first one, 10.40. There's the next one, 11.05. So I haven't got a clock now to help me. Now that's not to say that you can't still have a clock in front of you and try and picture where that time starts and where it finishes. Um, but I'm gonna show you a timeline that you could have a go at drawing. Um, and I hope, there we go, can move that there a little bit so you can see. So the timeline, I've started at the time um, that I was at Honington, 10.40, and then I've taken the timeline up to the time when I'm going to arrive at my destination, which is 11.05.
And can you see here, I've, done, I've got the timeline and it goes to 11 o'clock. So I've just got to work out how long is it from 10.40 to 11. And actually, this is quite helpful because it's given me a couple of options. Um, so I know I can go 10.40 to 11 o'clock, that's 20 minutes, that difference there. And then this one here, 11 to 11.05. Oh, that's quite easy. That's five minutes more. And now I just have to put those two together and go, it's 20 plus five minutes. It's going to give me 25 minutes. OK, let's have a look at one more of those. Um, and again, so I've got a time now. I've got um, how long does it take to get from Litchfield to Stoke this time? So I need to have a look, although a bit further apart this time. 7.50 um, and 8.40 are my times. So I could already start to think about that. Well, I know it's going to be less than a whole hour. Otherwise, that would have to be at least 8.50. Um, and I guess it's only 10 minutes less than an hour. So I, I could just reason in that way and go, so that must be there's 10 minutes less than a whole hour. That must be 50 minutes. Um, but the timeline can help me just to picture that and know that for sure. Um, and again, it's gone from 7.50 up to the whole hour, 8 o'clock. That's a 10 minute jump. And then I can do another jump from 8 o'clock to 8.40. And that's quite straightforward because I know that that's 40 extra minutes. So I've got that one there, 40 minutes, add on the 10 minutes, I've got 50 minutes. OK, let's try another one if I come out of here and just have a look at this one. So I want to know how long is the journey from Belton to Welby? Oh, 12.38, it's a bit more specific this time, um, to 13.20. It's also asking me to use my 24-hour times as well. Um, but I can convert that. I know that 13.20 is the same as 1.20 p.m., if that helps me a little bit. Um, I also know it's really close to 12.40. Um, so I'm already visualising my time timeline and thinking it's going to go from 12 to 1 o'clock and then from 1 o'clock to 1.20. So I can say, right, show me the timeline. And I was right. So it's gone 12.38 to 13.00 or 1 p.m. And then 13.00 to 13.20. So how many minutes from here to here? Well, if that was 12.40, it would be 20 minutes. So it's got to be two minutes more. So that's got to be 22 minutes. And then 13.00, 1 o'clock to 1.20. Well, that's 20 minutes. Um, so that means I'm adding those together now. I've got 10.20. 30, 40, 42 minutes. OK, now, while this isn't something which you can access because it's a paid for game, all I want you to be able to see from here is how you could easily draw out your own timeline and go from the time up to the next hour. Sometimes you might need to do another jump of an hour as well. Um, and then from that hour up to that finish time. So hopefully you can use timelines to help you out a little bit there. OK, and finally, I'd like to just talk to you about timetables. Um, timetables can look quite complicated sometimes because there's so much all in one space. So let's take a look. This is something which you can have a look at um, at home. Um, and the link for this is on the timetables section of the um, PowerPoint that I showed you earlier. Um, so this could be a train timetable. OK, it's all made up, uh, but it goes from all sorts of different locations. Um, and as you're going across, these are each of the individual trains in this case, the time that they leave and the time that they arrive each of their destinations as they're going along. So I can see here 6.19 up to 8 o'clock. You'll notice these are all 24 hour times and that there's actually this sort of that colon is missing um, in some of these times here as well. But it's still that time there. OK, and it's a good bit of practice of your 24 hour time. Um, if you want to have a go at this activity, um, each time it's asking you to highlight when the journey starts and when the journey ends. So you're looking for that specific journey. Um, if I'm there, I'm looking for the 10.01 journey. So I'm going to scroll along 10.01. Um, and then when the journey gets to Akamai, it's 11.42. Yeah, that's the right journey there. OK, and then I can carry on uh, and I can use this level one section just to have a go, just finding times on the timetable, which can be quite tough in itself just because there's so many numbers to look at. Then I can move on and I can have a look at the level two section, which is a bit tougher. Um, and suddenly I've got so many more places um, on my timeline. But I've got gaps now as well. 
Um, I wonder if you can think about what those gaps might be there for. Why, why is it sometimes that there are times here and sometimes there's not? I wonder if you've been able to work that one out. So that idea that actually on for this one, the train will go all the way from I-10 Central to Highbrow, um, whereas here it will terminate at Airville instead. OK, so they are different is there in those trains in here. It starts here, but it skips out these places and then starts again here and carries on. OK, so that's what you're looking at when you see those little dashes. As you scroll down, then you're looking um, for the answer. So what time's the first train departs from I-Town Central? And I'm having a look. There it is, and you can still click on the different times, so it highlights it for you. So if you're trying to look at all those numbers, you can pick them out, and then you can type it in. 0, 6, 11. Okay, and then once you've filled in all of your questions, it's asking you like, how many stops does the train make, how many minutes does the journey take? So you can use those things there for how many minutes does the journey take from some of those other finding time differences that we've talked about already. Um, and you can go check your answers, and it will show you how you've got on with each of your individual questions. Um, the level three section for the timetables then actually shows you a real timetable. Um, so you've got a picture here of a real timetable for a train, uh, the times when it leaves different places, the times when it arrives, um, and then lots of questions to have a go at with that. OK, I hope that helps to make a little bit of sense of train timetables for you. Remember, you can email us if you've got any questions, if you're finding anything a little bit tricky, drop us an email and we'll do our best to try and explain for you. Speak to you soon. Bye.